to, uh, to let people know uh, is that Victoria Sams has incredibly graciously she's come across a great uh, high-value wristband for AthFest this weekend. Uh, and since she is heading back to DC, this is so if anybody is planning to be here this weekend and would like a wristband so you can do your, uh, your, prob your pub crawling, as we call it, uh, just let me know and uh, I'd be happy to give it to you. All right. So this morning, I am very happy to, uh, to introduce to you VJ Matthews, whose presence has been virtually here all week, as you know, with, with Thea Rogers has been uh, live streaming our events through HowlRound and, and doc video documenting other things. So we're all, uh, and most of us were already familiar with HowlRound before coming here. Um, so VJ is co-founder and cultural strategist of HowlRound, which is based at Emerson College. Um, and prior to that, I believe, was the uh, coordinator of the new plate of development for the NEA. Yes. All right. Um, so he's going to be talking to us this morning. Thank you. So, I was going to ask you all, how, how many of you were familiar with HowlRound before? I think, yeah, so many of you? Good. Um, yeah, so I want to, the way I'll structure this is I'll, um, I'm going to give some background to um, how around as an organization and then this new project that we have the world theater map I, and then um, the second part of that will be actually if you have your computers to uh, look at look at the website together and um, and so at the beginning I'll be you know talking and then we'll be then we'll get into conversation and actually getting onto our computers okay so um, so how around theater Commons um, you know, I'm a co-founder. It's based at Emerson College in Boston. We've been um, in existence for about seven years, but we've been at Emerson College for um, since uh, 2012. And it's a free and open platform for theater makers worldwide. And our mission is to amplify progressive and disruptive ideas about the theater and to connect diverse practitioners around the world to conversation and information and, and ideas. And on average, we have about 50,000 um, people who participate in our platform per month. And some of the tools that we use for this kind of community building include an online journal where theater makers share ideas, opinions, and practice. And, um, and then also a live streaming network where any theater organization can live stream <coughs> And our role is to help develop their capacity to live stream. And so it's, it's seen as a, a shared infrastructure, like all of our projects, a shared infrastructure for the field to use. And our role is as facilitators for that. And we also host in-person convenings that exemplify progressive values and uh, urgent issues in the field. And the new project that I'd like to share with, with you all today is called the um, World Theater Map. And, but before we get there, I just want to mention kind of our, our reason for being in the conceptual frame within which we work. So um, when we created HowlRound seven years ago, it was a direct response to research that suggested that artists were increasingly um, decentered or disempowered from theater making within our institutional theater uh, field. And then we wanted to also figure out what can we do with existing internet tools to help destabilize and decenter these entrenched power structures um, and these behaviors that we, that we saw that were kind of counter to, um, to artists. And also and change, and change narratives around what theater making and theater culture is in, in the US. And so we founded HowlRound to push back on US institutional theater culture that we think um, is very much a monoculture and lacking many types of diversity and which is to the detriment of our overall general theater culture. Um, too many voices have been left off of our stages and not given resources and not represented inside of our institutions and not recognized for the substantial contribution to, uh, to the past and present theater. And, um, and we also, as a field, have a terrible tendency to adopt commercial behaviors um, and commercial structures to, to make our theater. 
even within the nonprofit structure, which was set up to be a public good, like like museums, like libraries. Um, and now, or you know, it, for a long time, the nonprofit sector has been almost indistinguishable uh, from commercial theater. And so we we set about to create a a group of tools that could amplify voices and issues that were chronically underrepresented and underheard and unheard in the theater field. So, but instead of doing this in a kind of conventional top-down way that a, that a maybe online organization or a media organization would do, instead of being top-down and hierarchical, having kind of an editor-in-chief or like an artistic director model, we, we took our cue from the structure of the internet and um, instead adopted the principles of the commons as the way that we had organized ourselves. And um, we didn't seek out uh, directly commissioning people, but instead we created and developed invitations for the theater community to participate and contribute and co-own and co-manage this um, emerging knowledge commons for the field. And, um, and this invitation to the field, and it still sta stands, is, is around a set of progressive values such as equity and inclusivity and accessibility, a diverse aesthetics, a generosity and collaboration. All of these values which we think are very much embedded in commons-based peer production, which is the way that we make our information, our conversation, our knowledge. And, um, and to give, give a definition of the way that we're defining commons is it's a social structure that invites open participation around shared values. And another definition is that a commons is a form of wealth that we create together, um, that a community co-creates, and which is shared broadly without barriers and is co-managed by this community in order to benefit this community. And the most well-known example of a knowledge commons is the online encyclopedia Wikipedia, and which absolutely uses commons-based peer production as its way of producing its, its content, its knowledge. And um, also open source software projects use commons-based peer production. And in terms of a model, I, I think HowlRound is closest to an open source um, software project in that there is a, a, um, a small group of people who are working for an institution, for a, a nonprofit organization, um, who have set kind of an agenda, a, a set, or has proposed a set of values, and is inviting a community to create around that set of values. And so our roles um, uh, don't take on a conventional, traditional role as being editors, but as rather community organizers or facilitators, enablers of other people's expression and enablers of other people's um, agendas. And um, yeah, so we'll move on to the world, um, world theater map. World theater map, it's very simple. It's a, a user generated directory of the global theater community. And it's a digital commons that's free and open to all. And it's very similar to Wikipedia. Anyone can add information about any piece on the world theater map. The purpose of the uh, world theater map is to make the global theater community visible to itself, to facilitate conversation, knowledge sharing, and movement building. And, um, and we originally had another project that was that we had developed for about five years called the New Play Map, which was just focused on playwriting and, um, and, and the US. And the purpose of that map, uh, which we started, I believe, in 2009, even before the start, uh, start of HowlRound, um, the purpose of what that was to um, actually reveal um, the way that new work would get developed and produced within the United States, that there was this narrative of new work emerging, being born in New York City or in major theater capitals, and then getting maybe a New York Times review, and then have a life. And that wasn't actually the, the actual, accurate story. 
Um, and so this map was a way to change that narrative and, for, and to enable the community of new play developers and producers and playwrights to actually um, uh, list the histories of, of new work and that we could see it visibly and actually see it. Um, and also, um, in a continuing issue or problem or need that practitioners want is uh, the need to connect to each other and also to connect to more knowledge about the field. And, um, and so the map is, is hoping to fill, um, fill, this, um, fill this need. And um, also a tool like the map can help bridge various kinds of silos that our world theater community um, are in and help facilitate connection. So the map is for um, literally everyone, everyone in broadly what we're defining as the theater field. And that means all types of theater makers and companies and institutions, you know, actors, technicians, directors, playwrights, scholars, festivals, networks, producers, um, universities, cultural centers. Um, and any person uh, can edit any bit of information on the map. And it, it doesn't have to be your own. So here, um, I'll, go, I'll go into this. And then in the, the second part, we can, we can uh, review some of this. So I will, I will jump over now to the actual website for the World Theater Map. So here's the, the homepage, just at worldtheatermap.org. And um, it's also in English. Um, Spanish and French, and they all have their own uh, URLs to get there. And, um, and then up here you see the, um, actually what's in the database, what's in this directory so far. Uh, so you, this, you see this many people, um, organizations, shows, festivals, and locations. Uh, maybe half of this directory came from the previous project, the new play map, and the rest is, um, is data that people have inputted since, for the past, in the past, uh, we're in the 16th, 17th month now of it being um, public. And then here is just uh, one vis visualization of what's actually in this directory. So this, this globe here is showing the upcoming events. That means what's happening um, within this um, short time frame today. And, um, and then just to give, users an idea of what else can be visualized in the directory is here we have um, people who have identified as female theater makers around the world and and so that's it's very simple visualization and and many other kinds of searches that the directory can be put on this uh, globe as well as listed out and and then here we have um, the latest uh, posts both um, live streaming and journal um, articles from HowlRound. And, um, and then again, the, the numbers for the, the directory. Then the main, the heart of the, the um, map is this directory search. So I will show you um, first uh, an artist profile. And I'm currently connected to EDU Rome, so let's see if, okay, there. So I'll search for, there's these three tabs up here, profiles, which is both artists and organizations, or people and organizations, and shows, which means titles of shows, and uh, festivals. So I'll search for this one playwright here. Okay, so Aditi is a, a playwright in from Minneapolis, and um, and this I'm not sure if uh, either she wrote this bio or not, but again, it, it could be edited by anybody. Um, here it shows her kind of home base location, uh, contact information, and then um, the shows that where she's either playwright or some kind of a primary creator of of these. Uh, 
and specific titles. And then I'll click into this play um, by Aditi, and, um, and then you get an overall summary of it, and then an actual history of its performances and um, development, work in progress here. And then these can be even further clicked in to get information about um, who were the particular artists um, who, who worked on this. But this one wasn't filled out, so that I'll give you an example of that. Well, I'll come back to that. So each one of these um, performance or workshops could be filled out by you know, who was the designer for it or um, who was the director of it. Um, and, uh, and then this is laid out chronologically. And what's, what's interesting is that um, this entire history of this play doesn't have to be known by one person. Where if, for example, you were the Playwright Center and you um, produced a work, work in progress, or there was a work in progress at the Playwright Center, they could just, or someone could just um, put this information in and associate it with this play, and then the system itself would compile all of these <coughs> events. So it's, in a way, it's taking a bunch of distributed information that could be isolated and siloed from each other to create this coherent chronological story of it. OK, and then now um, let's look for an organization. So this is a, a theater a producer and presenter in uh, Moscow. And um, here they have their, their about, their, all their contact information, their social media. And, um, and also all the shows that somehow they've helped to support or produce. And then I'll just click into this one title, Human Use of Human Beings. And, uh, and then there, again, you can get um, a synopsis of this particular work of theater. And then um, it shows you that it just had this one performance on these dates. And then I will, oh, I clicked on the wrong one, sorry. I will click into that particular event and then here, we'll be able to see this example of the specific um, artists who were, or participants on this particular event that happened um, July 18th through the 20th. And then all of these links link out to each of the profiles of all these people. Okay, and then another thing about this is networks and memberships and associations, which is another way for um, various groups of people to be, to be given one space, one centralized space uh, to find each other. Usually the speed of this is, it's instant. Um, maybe I should get onto another network here. Um, okay, so this is a, this is a network based in, um, in Australia. And then they're able to, as a network, they're able to um, have 
add um, organizations that belong to the network so that they appear on their profile and vice versa. Uh, for example, Playwriting Australia is able to add themselves as, a, um, as associated with Theatre Network New South Wales. Okay, and then um, I think probably the most exciting part of the directory here is actually searching by, by interest. So um, when, when someone is uh, filling out a profile of either an organization or a person or a show, um, they're, they are able to select multiple interests. So for example, let's say we wanted to look for a director interested <coughs> in climate change. Then we get this list, um, and then also if you want, it, you want it visualized, you can get it visualized like that. And then also <coughs> you can share these specific searches. If you find something very interesting, you could just tweet or share it, and then people will be taken to this, uh, to this list or to this globe. And, um, and then you can do multiple things, like um, I'm looking for, um, let's say, some kind of organization a festival for example interested in climate change or a festival that's interested in the African diaspora and um, or everyone interested in artists' rights and safety. And then, let's say, and circus. And then, so you can mix and match, and you can have multiple selections with, um, with all of these searches. And let's try one more. So educator, scholar, Morocco. And um, OK, so that's uh, yeah the people and organization search. You can also search by um, cities, if you know a specific city, um, all the different kinds of organizations out there, as well as different categories of uh, roles that people take within the theater field. And um, and then, um, as well as you could search by a postal code for organizations and people. Then here's a, now we'll jump over to the show uh, search. So this is titles of, of works. And um, for example, if you're looking for a show that's where the one of the languages or a language is in Arabic, you would get that listing as well as a map of it. Um, and then you can do multiple languages if you wanted. And um, I'm just curious, is there any sign language yet? OK, yeah, so two that have sign language. Um, and, then, um, and then you could also search by the, a show countries, country of origin. So let's see, shows that uh, originate from Argentina. And it gives you both events as well as um, the overall um, show page. Okay. And then, um, then I'll jump over to um, festivals tab, which is you can um, go back in time if you wanted to to you know as far as this calendar will take you. Which I'm not sure. I can think. I think it will go back years and years. Um, or you can search in the future. So let's let's say August from August first on on these are the the festivals that have been listed. Okay. And 
yeah, so that's, that's kind of a, 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 a overview of what the map is able to do. The, in terms of adding information, you're just given these two choices. You can add a person organization festival, or you can add a show event. Um, and that means you know, either a performance or some kind of development work on a show, and you can list it there. So um, what we've been doing in terms of launching this, so it was launched as a beta website in January 2017. And, um, and what we have been doing is collecting feedback from the community of users through various means, through a, a user forum, uh, which is um, over here, and um, as well as um, you know, people uh, emailing us, um, we conducted surveys, and we also engaged a cohort of, of um, ambassadors from uh, 29 different countries, 29 ambassadors from 20 different countries, to help, to be kind of a cohort of people um, to give us feedback um, based on the way that their local communities um, were interacting with the map. And, um, and so we, we've been working with them for about uh, eight months now. And, and some of the findings that we've had is that the way people are using the map currently is, um, j I'll just give you some anecdotes. So mapping rural theater in India um, to make those theaters visible to, um, to the urban theater communities. And, um, and then another ambassador was talking about how people in her community, for example, mapping all the women directors in Ireland to counter the dominant narrative that there aren't any, or, or, or that there are very few of them. And, um, and then another use is of finding other theater makers and organizations who share certain values or aesthetics or interests um, for things like a conference or festi uh, festival opportunities to connect and discover. Okay, so I think we can now um, go back to this here. We can now kind of open it up to questions and then we can get on, um, get on our computers to actually do some more things. One simple question I have. So, um, What's the mechanism for if you uh, if there are errors once you've entered something or you notice a problem? Like, did I see how you can add new names yeah. and things that are missions? But yeah, so I'll show you. So, um, for example, <coughs> if if there's some kind of error here, yeah. you just click edit, and then. Um, let's see. And then you could just, you know, add something, edit here. You could even change the title if it needed a title change, maybe from the to just bald. And um, you could add additional primary creators to this. And and then you can, and what the best thing, I mean, one of the great things is this can, it's iterative, the editing process. So. Um, someone could add additional um, subject categories or tags to make it more findable. Um, and then, yeah, so that's one way to edit. And then um, you can also, for example, subscribe if you wanted to, if you're interested in just getting any updates to this particular page, you could just hit subscribe. And then you get an email notification sent to your email telling you what the new change was whenever there is a change. Um, so, I mean, that's, I mean, that has various uses where it's just to keep up with get informed. And another is if you're interested in kind of protecting the integrity of mm -hmm. the information there, you could always see what's being changed. How do you resolve disputes in that instance? Mm -hmm. um, no, not yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been mostly um, no disputes yet. There's but I'm looking forward to that. Do you have a mechanism for that? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs>
and um, another thing that can be done is just deleting because there's a, also in terms of um, some of the data gets duplicated or mm -hmm. there's some kind of technical errors if someone's connected to the internet and then it goes out then some maybe a duplicate may be for, created then anyone can just hit delete and then uh, we're notified that there's a delete request mm -hmm. then we check it over and then if it's good then we can delete it I was going to ask a s kind of a similar question, so I'll add on to that. Um, but since you don't have a mechanism yet for resolving disputes, I was just wondering because I love your idea of progressive principles and equality. Do you do you have a plan like Wikipedia does for like yeah. locking things down, or like, and how does that does that conflict with like the values of the organization? I, so I just was wondering if you could speak to like what maybe what you plan to do. I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not sure yet. We. Um, it would, what, I, what I think we'd do is, once we have a dispute, a first one, we'd kind of, in a way, pilot it out and then ask the community what we do with it. Um, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of locking something, um, we, I don't think we're going to do that because it's um, the, kind of one of the, the core principles here is that we're collectively creating this this very always permanently incomplete data set together for various purposes and one of them is not to be comprehensive um, and um, and yeah so and, and I think in terms of that kind of dispute and potential for um, vandalism you know we when we were running the new play map we didn't have any instance that we know of of vandalism and and that was up in public for about five years. Um, the only vandalism actually came from just software, from spam, spam bots. Um, but people weren't doing it, which was interesting because I think um, there's there's something about the structure of, for the sometimes things have changed in the past since the election, um, but there's something about the generosity of Commons-based peer production that um, I think really brings out the best or best intentions in people. Now, to the election and other things, we have seen definitely um, out of nowhere or out of that um, trolling, you know, commenting on our journal um, that we had never seen before, which is different and different, interesting phenomenon. Do you have a way for users to access uh, like the raw data that you're creating? Oh yeah, yeah. Do, uh, good question. I, I forgot to mention that, and that's. A uh, really important, um, and what we think is pretty promising, or we're really excited about it. So, the entire code base is available on GitHub, mm -hmm. and um, for free, anyone can pull it, take it, adapt it, and we'd love collaborators um, to make it, improve it, or just do something completely different with it. Um, and then there's also an API, um, everything is available, all the data except for um, people's uh, emails and passwords. Um, and which no one actually needs because you just need an email and password in order to be an editor of the map. And that's the only thing. And so, um, yeah, but everything else, every piece of it is completely available. Also, we're very interested in in the potential or possibility of of collaboration that way, that would be that would be excellent. Because really, what we're up to here is, um, in a way, this is a first draft, and it's a it's a call for collaboration and participation for um, the community out there to um, to work with this or work with us or do something or make it better. Uh, I guess a uh, similar question to the previous. Um, uh, this is all really interesting to me, and I'm not that familiar with how round, mostly being a dance person rather than a theater person. Um, but as I, as I look at the map and think about who's submitting things to this map and so forth, um, maybe you already kind of answered this in a way in saying that it's you know not going to be locked down, but I'm curious about 
the monitoring or curation or, or whatever of those people that add um, right now as we're moving through this, I mean, Mama Mia pops up, but there's a lot of things that are uh, things that I would I would typically choose to go out and see because they're in a certain range or a certain demographic of things that I that I agree with that is non-commercial. Um, and so I'm just wondering, I mean, uh, is there any intention or is it already in place that commercial theater is not supposed to be using this tool? I also just think about the way in which uh, theater events typically get advertised in the world through events pages and whatever. And the nonprofit stuff, the experimental stuff tends to get drowned out by the people that have money inevitably. So I can just imagine how this starts in a really good place, but if eventually just becomes completely overwhelmed by the kind of theater making that has resources and money and whatever, even though this doesn't cost anything, uh, just by sheer volume, I could see it being overrun by yeah. things that make it then difficult to get to the things that you want to see, want to participate in, want to know about, and so on and so forth, which it now currently seems to be doing really well. Yeah, it's... So, I mean, it's been around now public for 16, 17 months so far. And um, I think that it's, I think it's obvious, it's may, maybe obvious to maybe commercial theater that this won't be an effective tool for marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, um, and then also in terms of just kind of the principles of a digital commons, um, more can actually be more. Um, that the only space where um, there's maybe scarcity is just in this kind of one little tiny segment of the directory which is this visualization of what's happening today right that could be crowded out that's just you know that's a limited real estate there um, but generally you know say there were thousands of you know, uh, commercial projects on here they would just appear in particular searches in the directory yeah so for the moment it's not I don't think it's an issue um, but it's a, that's a, it brings up the good point about um, you know scarcity and kind of the and the the curation or putting barriers around around things and um, and yeah so for the most part for a, a you know an information project like this uh, it's it's oftentimes not necessary to put. Um, you know, just to put restrictions. So we haven't even defined theater here, and there's nowhere where you find a definition of theater. And you know, theater means different things in different contexts. Um, so, yeah, and that's another another aspect to it. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I was a little bit late. Maybe you did this, but I'm two, two things. Um, I'm curious about how you get this out to theater groups, me, people who are doing performances to, are there invitations sent out? Because um, I don't know about theater world map, you know. How do you disseminate um, or invite people in? And then also, um, is there commentary for after seeing the show? <laughs> I mean, um, it, not so much reviews, but just sort of an interactivity with people who looked it up on there, went to it, and have something to say about it? Yeah, there's not that feature of commenting on, on a show. Um, uh, however, in terms of letting people know about it, it's, um, so we have this, this cohort of uh, World Theater Map Ambassadors, and let me just quickly pull up where they're from. So you see the list here. And, um, they they have been doing a lot of um, you know going to festivals and conferences and talking presenting the map um, in their various communities um, and then um, and then also we as a staff at HowlRound have gone to a few uh, festivals and conferences to present it um, but that's yeah and we're not sure w how else to get it out except just through this kind of thing this kind of forum and word of mouth. There's a, a group in Berlin that has a web, uh, it's actually one guy, <laughs> Mario Sbarro. He, it's, it's only a media performance. 
So anything connected with multimodals and things, it's, very, it's largely European, but it has a, a large um, Asian base as well. But he just started with an email, just inviting people who he met, and then it you know, grew to, so anyway, it's just, and it's, it's wonderful because it, it connects you to those people. You know, I get, just get an email once a month, and then I go to the website. I think maybe just a quick question. First of all, this is fantastic. Yeah. I, this, this is kind of thrilling in all kinds of ways. Um, and just thank you and, and the larger community for, for creating it. I can hardly wait to be part of it. Um, I do have a question about, I'm sort of, I'm on the tab, what kind of organization is this? And I'm wondering if there's a gap there or a purposeful sort of lack of space for uh, colleges, universities, and, and other kinds of educational institutions and organizations. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's the tricky thing about coming up with these tags and the way that they were developed. Oh, I, I stopped at other. So that, that was my apology. <laughs> 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 oh, no, always think others like that. <laughs> so you, you see a lot of, there it is. you see a lot of slashes here, right? Yeah. Um, because what kind of the principle of tagging is that there's a certain kind of um, point where tags no longer be use, uh, are useful when you have a proliferation of them, right? Yeah. So um, we really worked hard to chop this down um, drastically with um, a huge amount of feedback from a bunch of test users and people from all over. Um, so, and also this interest list is pretty, it's small but at the same time big, but I think we're at maybe in the sweet spot of not being too big not being too small. That was a very kind answer to a very dumb question. <laughs> First of all, I, I would like to thank you as well, and how well in general as, as well. It's something I've used a lot as a playwright. I used to the new play map and I, I teach in an MFA playwriting program, so it's been really helpful finding connections and people and new plays. Um, and this new project is really exciting the way it expands all of that. My question um, is, I wonder if you have thought at all, I know it's just beginning, but I wonder if you've thought at all about connecting to other um, theater maps like the Theater Times that Magda Romanska does it, also at Emerson, you know, or, or these, other these other websites that are trying to like create sort of a global uh, knowledge base of what's happening and you know, it would just be really, I don't know how you would do it because I don't program, but you know, like if you could both look at like, what are the plays in Poland on the new play map? And then what are the articles about plays in Poland and the Theater Times or, mm -hmm. you know, I wonder if there's any room for collaborations like that. Yeah, um, that's, yeah, that's a constant question we have um, that, you know, ultimately this, this is a call for collaboration and um, figuring out how to technically connect with a bunch of different other yeah. data projects is very, very difficult yeah. and, um, and requires a huge amount of resources, uh, time, money, capacity, personnel. And um, so that, that's one you know, obstacle there. Um, the way that we've been, we, the way that we conceived of this particular project is that, um, that this is a, a place that points out to other sites, yeah. to other websites, organizations, people, um, shows, and where it's not really housing the content, but being a, a centralized place to point out to it. Mm -hmm. So the ideal thing is that things are on Wikipedia or things are on organizational websites, mm -hmm. and they, they get listed here, and then people click off to them. Mm -hmm. And then that's why, in terms of this API, it's a flow of information out from this map, from this database as opposed to a flow of information in. Yeah. That makes it manageable. Right. <laughs> and I just want to point out one thing about, uh, for example, um, um, links to articles are, are giving more context to the data that's here that you may not have seen yet. So the Confrontations Festival which used to be a fantastic festival in Lublin, Poland, um, is, so it's 
listed here, this is just their organization uh, profile or for this particular festival, 2016. And then um, you automatically get, it's imperfect, but you get um, a little more context. You get written work or, or video content attached to this profile automatically. And so there were live streams from this festival and then you could click over and actually see this sh a show from this particular um, festival. Okay, then, um, and then another thing, I'll just point out another example of that, because that, that's interesting. Let's see, um, I'll go back to that original playwright we were talking about. where it, uh, the system automatically pulls posts where she's mentioned or that she's authored on her own. Uh, so, you know, pulling, pulling other sources, you know, things off of her own, um, we thought about that, it's, that would be very complicated. And then also the selection of what, what we choose would be very difficult. Yeah, kind of a couple different questions. I'll see if I can keep them concise. But um, so my first is just very um, pragmatic related to that. Can you, is there a way to pull content from other places? Can you post um, links to other, if you had other uh, websites or video um, or like a website to a theater company or a particular artist, or does it have to be showing up on HowlRound in order to um, connect oh, yeah. it? So that posts show up here? No, um, no, that's not possible. However, um, for example, let's see, you could, let's, let's look for a show. On an actual show profile, you could link to various other organizations and websites um, or more information just through a, a, a URL. Oh, so you could. Okay. Yeah, you can. Okay, great. Um, and, um, yeah, and I also just want to, again, the, like other people have mentioned, to say how great I think this is as a resource. And I do plan to make use of it. it, it it's terrific. Um, but my other question is actually a little more generally about the, the HowlRound website. Um, so, uh, for example, the, the Latinx Theater Commons, um, is this, so um, is, is this something that you want to um, continue to build at HowlRound more generally. So, so this is totally independent of the map. Is there an interest in creating more sort of specific community commons within the HowlRound? Um, yeah. So, th this, um, so in a way, incubating other commons, exactly. other networks and communities. Um, definitely, uh, this the La La Latinx Theater Commons was really special in that the the people who came together were incredibly motivated, incredibly passionate about it, and, um, and very focused. And so, um, and so we, and we were lucky to be able to, um, you know, to help um, foster that and, um, you know, support that work. So, yeah, um, in a way, kind of, you know, how, how around is, is modular in, in that these modules come from the community, and it's, we, we, um, kind of feel, feel where the energy is coming from and we go towards it and then we help amplify it. It's less of a direction of, it's a less of a you know, top-down thing where we're trying to plan out um, what are we gonna do next or what, what are we interested in next. This is just a comment um, that I'd like to say out loud while I have everyone's ear. Um, my head is currently buzzing with lots of uses for the World Theater Map in the classroom. And I know that we're going to be talking about pedagogy today and probably quite a bit next week. And um, this is an invitation. I'd love to chat with anyone in this room about potential assignments um, or projects based on this. Um, because I have a lot of you know, eighth baked ideas right now. And yeah, so this is great. Thank you. In terms of, uh, and I wanted to just quickly point that out. That in terms of um, scholars, researchers, educators using the map, one of the things that I've heard is that you know, for example, there's there's someone who's um, 
researching a francophone African theater. And, um, and those information sources are very scattered. And, um, and so she sees the map as a potential, as, uh, has a lot of potential for actually like having, you know, making a list of theaters and artists who come from um, the certain francophone countries. Um, just to you know, have that vis visualization um, and, and then to be able to share that with other people. So that's one use. So I'm just pulling up the globe visualization of educative scholars. So far, only 224, so get to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Is this, I have a more technical, you might be getting into this next, but in the searches, um, I see the default is it, it's uh, doing ors. Can you do ands to restrict categories or nots to, like if you're interested in everything but commercial theater, could you say, not commercial theater? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Um, so let's see. There was, this was a big discussion with our web developers about you know, a weeks long <laughs> thing about what we could do. And it's, yeah, it is and. And that's because it's pulling from I actually don't understand how it works, mm -hmm. but it's um, there's something big and complicated about <laughs> it that makes it impossible to uh, limit it through um, to limit to do an or versus an and. So let's see. So this, for example, yeah, we see the numbers increasing, right? Right. But then let's see if we add one country here to. To this. Okay, so this is so it is a combination. So it w used to be seven hundred seventy-seven, and then when I added Argentina, it limited it. Right. So it's so there's a kind of interplay with and between the fields and a or within yeah. the fields. But conceivably, <coughs> let's say ten years from now, if this gets, you know exponentially populated, yeah. it might be very difficult. let say you're searching, you know, two categories in, you know, North America. Yeah. If you get 1,500 returns without yes. the capacity or the mechanism to limit those in some kind of meaningful way. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's an issue. Um, because it's, right now you're building it as, a, as an accumulative yeah. exercise. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's yeah. That brings up a thing. Interesting thing is that um, we are we're building a new howround.com website, which we're hoping to launch in September or October, and um, so we have seven years of um, incredible content from the community, writing and video, thousands and thousands of pieces, um, and we have lost track of the incredible richness of this database of this archive. And so what we're, what we're gonna do a feature is create, creating um, a way for people to make lists or like a mixtape of, uh, I got that term from, um, from you uh, last night, um, um, of, um, of posts that people could use in various ways, you know, their favorite, or they're teaching a, a course and it's a listing of articles and, and video content. And so, and it also, you know, that falls really squarely in the idea of um, a community managed resource where all of us um, become um, docents, you know, of, of this archive. Because it's, it's really impossible for us to keep up with what's going on. And so, yeah, in this case of the ever expanding database, um, that's maybe one possible solution to kind of help that issue of uh, things being too big to find. Do you have a, like, a librarian or someone no. with in for no? No, we don't. Oh, that would be great to have That one. would be, a, that is unfortunate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, like, there's a yeah. whole field of study that is about managing 
how information gets stored and categorized and how metadata gets developed and how to make that comprehensive and, and sustainable. Yeah. We, we would need help, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that database and allowing various kinds of mining of the database. So a mixtape is a really cool metaphor for that. So is a syllabus, right? And to be working with educators who think, well, how might you, one, what might be some educational paths through this database or into it or around this database, um, or even providing a more abstract concept of what are some ways of thinking about the database and how you might shape it into some kind of a lesson plan or a semester arc or even a multi-semester arc. Um, people who have created accounts, and half of them are editing, actively editing. Um, and that means um, you know, creating content or ed editing already existing content. And then um, it's about 70% of those users are outside of the US, of those editors are outside of the US, um, which, is, which I think is pretty good because the other project was all US, and so we weren't expecting that much um, adoption from outside the US. Um, and since you know we have a legacy of being focused on the US, um, and you know a, a community that kind of came from that, um, it's been kind of a, a slow, slow development to have more non-US people. And then other things, yeah. So that's that's what we know about the map users is is that it's about half. Half our editing. So um, further moving on my idea about uh, the, the ways through, or, or riffing on right to, of course, the ways through, uh, would be maybe even in finding a place where people could post syllabi and um, the, an assignment sheets fully, so that, I mean, they could come up on profiles for plays and things like that. So, oh, I want to assign this play. What syllabi also include this play? What people have assigned a have created assignments for that, or not what people, but what assignments have been created and like kind of linking through that way too, which is, I know, more stuff, but. Um, over the last several days, we've heard from a, a lot of people about, uh, you know, how challenging it is to develop their DH projects and put them online and how long they're web platforms last online, which is not very long. Um, so I'm just curious, in this instance, uh, I mean, uh, you talked a little bit earlier um, about where you're hosted and so forth, but I'm just trying to get an idea of how many people, like what is the labor behind the scenes that manages this thing in its entirety? And I would imagine you hope to keep this going in perpetuity, but 
uh, what are the, uh, you don't have to get into specifics. I'm just trying to get a general sense since we're all interested in our own projects. And this seems to be a project that is successful and up and running and hasn't collapsed in on itself yet. Um, and let's hope that it never does. Well, what does it take to make this happen and yeah, keep so, it running? Uh, so we, we've been working with um, a web development company. And it's actually just two people um, called Mosswood. Um, and they're based in Manila. They used to be part of um, a worker cooperative uh, web development um, company called Quilted, and uh, based in Oakland. Uh, and, um, and it was one of the pioneering worker cooperative. Um, and then that worker cooperative actually disbanded. Um, and then um, one of the developers then just started this other firm. So we've been working with them for many, many years now, 10, ten years, I think, um, on mapping as well as our previous website. Um, so it's very close relationship that way. Um, and then, so not, not a huge team at all. It's really just one, two people. And then in terms of um, us as administrators, it's, um, there's not, a, apart from the kind of um, just communicating about it and managing it in terms of that, um, it's just, you know, our, our very small team of four people at HowlRound, um, but among various other projects that we're doing. And, um, yeah, so it's not, it doesn't require that many resources. However, you know, these technology projects are very tricky in terms of complexity when, um, or just, you know, bugs, there's nonstop bugs that, that happen or that just suddenly come. So, um, and then also we're very willing to end this project after maybe a year or so. If if there's if there's not real fire underneath it, um, and uh, and I, I think we're not not afraid to actually just completely end it, um, and which I think is important because there's a lot of learning from from this um, that we could you know that other people can take, and a, a lot of learning for ourselves for future projects. So we don't know. It's still I mean we we see it up here still held data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe I already answered this because I feel like I'm getting all these questions, which they're all fabulous, by the way. Um, coming from art history, I'm, I'm definitely going to figure out a way to use this in my class because this is phenomenal. Um, my question is, and this is, of course, one of those logistical issues that I'm sure probably gets thrown out all the time, is the, the language components great? I mean, you have these three major languages, but I'm like, my area of specialty is in Middle Eastern art, and I'm just thinking about uh, the language component there and also the access to information. Um, and if there's any way, like any of those, of like Iraq, I'm looking at um, Tehran Mubarak's website, the that theater, that, the one Iranian theater yeah. that's represented. So I'm just wondering if there's any ways to disseminate or maybe provide language access if, the, if there's no, if say theater, Professors or rights, et cetera, can't act, can't speak these languages like Spanish or English. Yeah, um, th th this is kind of comes up against our. It's kind of a question of our capacity. Yeah, exactly. as well. Um, it's it was pretty pretty intense to get it into these three languages, and um, you know the dream, the original hope was that it would be um, definitely in Arabic. Uh, as another language, um, and then, um, yeah, and then I mean the hope would be that is absolutely multilingual. But then you know us kind of our first time doing a website in multiple languages, we learned that it's a lot more difficult than what we thought. Um, and so, and and just to briefly quickly uh, talk about how this language stuff works is so for example if you are on the French website. And you added information. You do it. You can do it completely in French, and then the system itself will automatically, uh, the software will do a software translation. It takes a Google um, Translate API and translates that French into English, and then there'll be a little notice whenever you 
visit that profile saying this, and when you see it in English, it says this was translated from French by not a human. <laughs> and please improve it. Um, and uh, which is, I think, a great kind of like uh, in-between solution that we have for um, people just being able to see this in French or just being able to do it in Spanish and then to have their stuff actually accessible in English though they may not speak English. Um, so that's, yeah, that's one thing. It, it, like the next language definitely, if we have the resources, would be um, Arabic. Um, then apart from that, um, the only thing at the moment is just, you know, using a, a Google Translate little browser extension to have bizarre translations. Yeah, that's <laughs> super insane. You're like in Japanese or in Arabic, they just turn out so. strikes me as a rather unique space that you're carving out for yourself. So I had a question for you. It's maybe like a career trajectory question. How do you? How did you conceive of yourself as a cultural strategist? <laughs> how does it fit in with sort of, how did you come to this place? How? What satisfies you personally <laughs> in this work? And yeah, where, you have another life as a career, art, like as a theater artist. How did you, how do you make space, or did you have to give it up, or what do you think is going to happen in the future as, oh, yeah. you know, for yourself? Yeah. So, um, so that title. Okay. Well, that's um, it, that's about um, you know the kind of a role that I think also that we take all all of us at Haran is. Um, one of the primary goals is to change culture. And, um, and that we can actively do. And so that's where that kind of title comes from. And, um, and then especially through the, the systems and models in which we operate. And so that's why we're, we're big fans and big believers in, in commons-based peer production. Um, and that in a way as a, as a, a social model that um, that really enables and brings out certain behaviors in all of us. And because if we continue to live in, in just kind of our dominant um, society's model, we adopt those behaviors of scarcity, of competition. Um, and um, yeah, it, and kind of one of the big lessons that I've had personally over the years with Hellrun is that um, that your personal intentions um, often get can get and will get um, trumped, or your personal values can get trumped by the systems and organizations and institutions in which you live. And um, you know the the systems I live in sometimes can bring out the worst in me. And um, and so whereas alternative models like commons based models. Um, can do other good, can bring out good behaviors. And so I'm kind of, you know, I feel not like we don't, we're not in complete control of ourselves. Does anyone want to um, put something on the map right now? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, will, I will type. I guess kilowatts. Kilowatts. Oh yeah, let's let's look it up first. Is there a show in there that you want to add from? Oh, sorry. Oh, good. Oh, I was just playing. I was just playing around. Oh, okay. Just, that's what I'm familiar with. I just wanted to see. <laughs> I just wanted to see it vaulted. <laughs> <laughs> and that was another question. So some of them don't have links. So that's maybe we can peer at it and just add in. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you see something that's incomplete. Because um, Albert, sh I, just, I just looked this up like a minute ago. It's one of the theaters in Baghdad's coming back after hmm. not being there for obvious reasons. Um, so it's one of those things like, can you add like links to news articles? Say the theater was destroyed, it is in the process of being rebuilt. Yeah. So that might be something that's interesting so people know like, in the next few years, they'll start running shows again and start using it as an open venue. <coughs> yeah, so what you could do, like, let's just pretend this was the theater company. Um, those links that could definitely go in, um, in this about box, mm -hmm. right? And then, um, and then of course the organizational website, or maybe even better, just link to the organizational website, and then that would be nicely organized. Um, and then you see all these other links that you can add in here, as well as adding um, links that are not one of these um, other ones like social media. Are you, um, so you're like collecting data on who's using it, where they're from. Um, do you have the ability to, to collect information of who's visiting it even if they haven't signed up with an account? Yeah, so we're using um, Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. I may not be able to get in right now. But um, yeah, so we're able to see the non-logged non in people and where, where they're coming from. And it's about the same as, um, as the people who, are, who have accounts. What do you mean the same? Do you so mean like the like same distribution where it's um, like s um, the percentage of people outside the US. Got it. And let me see if I can maybe pull up um, quickly like the country spread of the users. Well, I know that the majority, the country that has the most users is, um, I believe it's Argentina, <coughs> users who have accounts. And, um, and the top, you know, top five or so countries are um, uh, Spanish-speaking Latin American countries. Hmm. So any, anything else, any other ideas for what to put up there or? I have a question yeah. about the, the UNESCO that came up. This is just bugging me. So yeah, it ends in 2050. I don't know if that's because it's <laughs> meant to be absurd. <laughs> Someone with a sense of humor. <laughs> no, I think actually this is, uh, this is that original production that's at that theater. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, and it's been in running continuous, continuously for yeah, yeah, since 57. Uh, yeah. And I think they have with no they Mm -hmm. They have no plans of stopping, so I think it's completely legitimate. <laughs> so they, do they have to put in an end date? Uh, yes, in order to be way. an event that's happening, you have to have an end date. You have to have an end date, yeah. so they just put it away. Yeah. Um, Let's see if they filled out <laughs> further information. So you're confident the world will continue to exist through 2050? <laughs> um, yeah, that, well. Well, they are. Is there a limitation? <laughs> oh, in terms of dates and, and stuff. So, you know, this is very much also an, you know, historical archive. It could you could put in events and shows that happened, you know, 20 years ago. And um, so you'll find if you dig in there, especially I think some U.S. based um, plays, you'll see some old stuff. So right at some point, so there's you know there's this way you land on this page and it's and it's upcoming events right and there's kind of this this very kind of presentist or or you know, future projecting feeling to it, but at some point it becomes more and more of a, a historical archive right mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. as you know as many shows kind of maybe probably more I would imagine as they at some point are in this kind of historical archive as are coming up right um, and then at some point you also start to have this maybe archive of makers right we don't live forever. And so it starts to become this. 
so um, I guess I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm not really sure what the question is exactly, but there's something interesting here about how this right now feels very present, but at some point becomes very much about the past as much as anything else. And so I'm just curious about, does that at some point shift how, what this is and, and how you deal with it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, in terms of this this visualization, like part of this is also, um, it, see, I think we would all feel bad if this was the homepage, like because, in but the trade off is that if we don't have a globe, that we would just be looking at this because the core of it is just this search, is the directory, right? Mm -hmm. And that would be pretty boring. But the problem is, with us having a globe, we, in a way we're communicating the wrong thing, mm -hmm. that it's about events happening today, um, where it's really not that, that's just one sliver of the directory. So that's a, that's a bit of a struggle in terms of just the visual design. Because like, say this was the World Theater, World, World Theater directory, um, I would die. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's something. Has anyone gone in to pull out some, some of the data and make other kinds of visualizations? No, not yet. I'm just thinking hoping, of like, um, like other ways of, rep you know, I'm not that you should read your homepage, but I'm just thinking of like, you know, making a map that like was also like correlated to a timeline, right? And so if you sort of, you know, I don't know, starting in 1957, let's say, and mm -hmm. as you sort of slide forward, you could watch things pop up in different spaces. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And so we're, we're really hoping someone would do that, and what they would do is just um, pull on this API, mm -hmm. and then they could just, um, for example, query one particular set of data um, to then make a completely new website, web app, or mobile mobile app. Um, and you know what 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 would be an example is like I don't know someone just interested in. Um, like, like, like you said, a chron chronology of mm -hmm. events, or um, climate change theater artists in the UK, and make something around that. Or alerts. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be too much. Oh yeah. Just you yeah. know, like Absolutely. you could do it so like basically it would, you know, ping you every morning with like everything that was happening. Oh, yeah. Today in the yeah, world, totally. or in a particular, you could craft it to a particular city. Um, something that has come up a lot in this institute already is this idea of um, that any particular interface, and I think this is, an, if I can make my own totally non-quantitative um, survey of the things we've discussed, particularly applications that have any kind of animation or using some, something to, to animate themselves, much like the globe, which is, which is very cool and very smooth and sleek, um, tend to break down very fast in the online realm. And so um, ha at some point, all that might be left might be the search and then not the search anymore. And so um, have you thought about sort of a, a legacy for this? I know you said if it's not succeeding, you want to take it down. But um, assuming it is successful, and which I think it will be and it continues to grow, then have you thought about, well, what happens as the technology changes, and if no one is concerned enough about the project in ten years to maintain the the interface? Oh yeah, the, the actual yeah. So um, I mean, what you see here is actually just kind of one way. I mean, the data is structured in a this very specific way, and but then um, and then that data can live on um, in this repository and can be revived. You know, if if this site doesn't exist anymore. Um, it can be revived and then reworked. Um, so yeah, so there's that. And then also, we could actually kind of totally refactor um, or, or create a new expression for this website based on the underlying data. Because this is actually just one, one subjective expression of the database. Though at the same time, the database, we, we designed it in a specific way. And maybe it's the wrong way. Um, and maybe we'll discover that. Um, so I think we're 
near our time. Yeah, so that was fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, so we'll meet back here at uh, 1040.